What's up, everybody? Mike from Talk to the Mike here with another interview, and I'm here again with your boy Shaq Claire. What's up, Mr. Chiz Knack from the T Dot? What's up, everybody? How you doing? Thanks for being on the show again, brother. Yeah, for sure. It's always great to be with you. So, uh, what's what's new? What's new with you since last time? Uh, a lot of real good new stuff is happening. Um, like the touring, going back on the road is happening again. So that's been really cool. And uh, uh, seeing a lot of people that I haven't been able to, fans and friends, uh, that I haven't been able to see in a couple of years due to all this other stuff that's been going on, the pandemic and everything like that, and everything being shut down. So being able to get out there and uh, being able to get out there and just go and meet with people who support you and also friends, because then you get a chance to catch up with friends when you get into those, uh, you know, into certain cities that you haven't been into in a while. So it's been really good and being on stage again, like that's part of my love. So uh, I've just been up to doing a lot of more shows, which is really great. They've all been really good. Got more coming up uh, real soon now. And um, and also just working on music as well. Um, you know, I'm able to go and go to other people's studios and stuff now because things are open before. It was just whatever I had at the house. You know, but like now I get to do how I like to go and collaborate and uh, work with, uh, you know, work with people in person and create music from like, you know, the grassroots up, like from like from the symbols to the last bass note and percussion, like, you know, like it and stuff like that. And so it's good to be doing that. So I've been doing a lot of a lot of that. And it's just been great to go and see that people are still out there checking for the vibes because they're, uh, you know. It's been a long time. Been on the road. Been I've uh, been doing this for a while, and uh, it doesn't seem like the energy has dropped. Exactly. Like I said, yeah. Like during COVID, it was been tough because you like you probably got like a sample of music. You made the sample. You have to send it out, and you're not really with the person. So you it, you you're hoping that the vibe is going to be good. And now when you're in the studio, you're with the person. It it changes everything. People said before that it wasn't wasn't a big deal, or that, but I find it better to be in person. So that I'm I'm happy everything's back to normal like that. So. Yeah, yeah, that's a good thing that, yeah, it's always good. Like, sometimes you just can't because uh, someone from, I don't know, California wants to do a track with you and everything, and it's easier just to send a, you know, send a stereo, stereo track and everything, and I go in the studio. But, like, if it's always possible to do it in person, then it's always good because then you get those creative minds just going at the same time, and an idea sounds hot here, and this idea is something you may not have thought of, something that they may not have thought of, and it works out great so uh being able to do that so recording new music i uh, got new music coming out with me and socrates um uh also with uh bishop and jordan uh so there's a lot of um a lot of new stuff coming out so i'm looking forward to it and uh that's what i've been up to just you know getting out of that whole pandemic thing and, and getting right back into the same swing and a new swing awesome awesome now uh you see you doing some touring what uh what's one of the cities that you enjoyed the most so far back on tour uh all of them all of them because again it's like i think the last time i was out there was i think uh at some of these cities and some of these cities i haven't even been to in even a longer while but like since it was the uh me classified a maestro tour the canadian uh yeah. that canadian hip-hop yeah. tour and um that was like 2018 i believe so yeah that's almost four years and stuff like that so i got to get back out there so like the love is still there a lot of people say i remember seeing you uh when you came out with classified over here over here i get a lot of messages from people saying oops there we go i knew that was about to happen uh yeah. get, <laughs> get a lot of people coming out and um and just saying like um you know uh are you coming to this city or that city or that city because that's the last time i saw you i actually i just got a message from somebody uh who wants to write this article um about me in uh like one of those like toronto blog or toronto life or something like that i don't know which one he's going to put it for yet but he was like and it's it was uh it was titled the best show nobody ever came to oh. and uh yeah uh it's a pretty cool thing of it it's just he was talking about like when i was first starting and i had a concert in brampton and he came and it was only like maybe me and solitaire and it was only like maybe me and seven people there um and 
the host came out and said, yeah, you know, I know there's not a lot of people out here, but you know, what? we're going to just do it. And then I came out, everybody, and then he's just kind of just gave me a little summary of it. And he was just like, yeah, you know, but you guys came out and you guys were just like, yeah, we're going to do it for a practice show. So we're just going to have fun with you and you just tell us how good it looks. And so we did the show. He said it was amazing. He loved the effort that went into it and everything like that. And then he saw me in Sarnia with Snoop Dogg. Mm-hmm. And he was like, it was even better. And he was like, because you took it serious the first time and now you take it serious this time. And so he's going to do something about that. And uh, so, like, yeah, th- these things are cool because I forgot I performed there. Uh, not with the Snoop, but the one at Brampton mm-hmm. until he brought it up. And then I do remember it. He's like, do you remember? And I was like, yeah, I remember. We were all standing there on stage like, is there a lineup outside? They're just holding up the line. Because back in the days, remember, they used to hold up the line to make it seem That's like it was true. packed inside. <laughs> But no, that was our night. But uh, it went really well, and they, they, everybody that was there was very supportive. And this was like right at the beginning, like you know, where some people didn't know to come or not to come, you know, to the show. So uh, it was good though, and it was good that he remembered it, that he wants to go and do an article on it. So that's dope. Uh, that's nice. I'm looking forward to seeing that article. So I'm gonna want to check that out. Yeah, so, as soon uh, as I find out when, uh, I'll let you know. I just told you, I don't know when, but he just asked me if he, I'd be interested. And I said, yeah, of course. Okay, perfect, perfect. Now, uh, you said you have some new music coming out. Is there anything coming out soon, before the end of 2023, or will it be all next year? No, before the end of 2023, probably before even October. Um, I have a couple of music. Uh, I'll definitely have two, two uh, singles before the new year, and if it all works out and plans out the way it's supposed to, I'll have like an album out. Well, I hopefully okay. by my birthday in March next year. Awesome, awesome! Um, you have to come down to Montreal for that, and we'll have a party for your birthday. Now, now that everything's oh, yeah. travel. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now, yeah, I definitely want to get back down to uh, Montreal. I'm actually going out to the East Coast real soon. This, this, uh, just coming up. Like, uh, ah. yeah. So that's going to be nice again. Well, East Coast, I haven't been out there in even longer. Because we didn't do the Canadian Classic Tour on the East Coast. We just did West all the way up into Montreal. And that's where it stopped. And um, so, yeah. So we didn't get to go to Halifax, St. John, St. John's, Truro, uh, uh, PEI, you know, like places like that. So Fredericton, everything like that. So it'll be great to go out there. For the first time, probably it's like six or seven years. Nice. That'll be, that'll be fun. That'll be like uh, kind of like uh, reliving all the old memories and everything, too. So. Yeah, yeah, and I, and there's a lot of great people out there, and I have a lot of great memories and friends out there. So, yeah, it's going to just be like, all of a sudden, everybody's going to want a free ticket, and I'm going to be like, you know, it's only $10 or 20 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> you should support me so that people get the money, and then exactly. I, they'll bring me back more often. <laughs> Randy from Trailer Park Boys sent out there, it's be like $10 or two Dairy Queen coupons. You know, like, so like you know how he does when he's like smoky and stuff for Trailer Park Boys? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's so, like, uh, oh, you're my you're my friends. You should be paying. <laughs> save the ten bucks for the show. Exactly, it's not expensive. It's not like it's you know it's, it's more expensive to go eat at McDonald's <laughs> than to go eat the uh, the show. So. Yeah, if it was a Janet Jackson concert and I was opening, I, okay, I would try and get you in. It's yeah, my yeah. concert. <laughs> 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 just with, just pay the ten bucks. <laughs> so uh, you still? I'm I'm assuming you're still a big wrestling fan like me. So oh. yes, uh, what have you, have you been watching more AEW? Or are you watching more WWE? Still on the WWE. Like I'll see highlights, but it'll be like um, like some of the wrestlers that I know that came over to AEW from WWE. Mm-hmm. Um, so like you know like when um the one that's married to the well, I might not even get his name right the, the announcer from Canada Renee. Yeah, Renee Young. Yeah, what's his uh, um, uh, Ambrose. Yeah. yeah, goes by uh, what's the name now? Uh, John Moxley. There you go. John Moxley. Yeah, like so. Like if I see like a clip, because I I don't really do like the, well, I don't do cable anymore. So everything is on like streaming. So like I'll just watch the highlight clips on the, on YouTube and stuff like that. But yeah, like so when like him comes up or Jericho comes up, or something like that. Even Cody Rhodes before he changed. Mm-hmm. I would um I'd check it out, but I don't know. I just have this loyalty to WWE. I don't know why. I don't know why. Uh like I'm sure they have great wrestling over there, but I don't know. I just I it's all my life. It was WWE. Exactly. 
you know, so uh, I know the wrestlers. I know when they come back. I know their history. I know. I just know the story. And then I don't even have to go and look at the. Like now, I don't really watch Monday Night Raw as much, although I just got the S N now app because I wanted to watch whatever the last um, pay-per-view was. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, SummerSlam. Yeah. So I went to go and do it, and then I was like, ah, oh, then I don't have to wait for the Blue Jay highlights. I could watch the Jay game there. I was just like, ah, oh, yeah. So I'll just <laughs> keep the app, right? Like, I'll just keep it. Um, but then, um, but yeah, like, uh, I still watch it, and I just I just watch, like, right before, like, the pay-per-view starts when they do all, like, either that hour-long before shows thing, or yeah. when they, just before the match, and they recap everything that they did in the hour-long pregame show. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so i'll watch those because it catches me up like i get the story i get what's going on exactly and stuff but i did miss the one in toronto and i was even saying just just on saturday yeah smackdown was in toronto on friday yeah I'm like e every time for the last few years wrestlemania SummerSlam, monday night raws smackdowns every time it's in town i'm always out of town and i, I haven't on to see one in a long time so i was really looking and that was edges you know it's the funny thing the week before that mm -hmm. i was gonna go to the blue jay game where they retired batista mm -hmm. so i was like oh, okay but i didn't know they were gonna do it but that was my whole plan i was gonna go down i was doing the show on the friday go down and um no i was doing a show on the thursday a show on the friday it's going to go and watch the game on the saturday and then come back home where I live now up near London in St. Thomas. Mm -hmm. And um, but that didn't work out. And then so Sunday, I'm looking for the highlights and they were like, oh, yeah, Batista retired. I was like, yeah, I was supposed to be at that game. <laughs> wow. Yeah, no, and you then I, a one day contract just to play the one game just to retire in Toronto. So just to retire in Toronto. Yeah. Like, you know, and um, and then then Friday that just passed, I was doing something on the Friday and then I go and I look on the saturday to watch like the top 10 smackdown highlights on youtube and uh and i see uh uh edge doing like a you know like a retirement speech and i didn't realize it was in toronto and then i remembered back in because they do it so far away back in may that it was like smackdown coming to toronto on august 18th or whatever day that was and it's like every time i miss it <laughs> so I got to keep, I got to put some, I got to use this phone to a better source uh, for a better purpose and make sure I put my notifications and cal cal calendar notifications and everything in there like two months in advance so I can just go and plan for it. <laughs> exactly. So yes, there was a, I'm not sure if it was Edge's retirement or not because he didn't say he was retiring. He just said that uh, it's, 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 his contract expired. He can always renew a new contract and there's always a, there's like a rumor going around now that he's going to AEW. I'm not sure if that's true or not. So they got that spreading around it where now that he was uh, you've seen talking to Christian a lot and they're they're chit chatting. So I'm not sure that's how much of that is true or not, but be interesting. Yeah. Well, hey, you know, like Christian's still wrestling, Edge can still wrestle, so you know, that might be good, you know. It's whatever. It's whatever the business is the business. Maybe they're gonna give him more dollars over at AEW and exactly, you know, and and put the edge and Christian connection back together and you know, and do something big over there, and eh, who knows? Like whatever. I, I'm still a fan. I just more. I don't know the stories that are going on in AEW. Um, I, I well, I don't barely know, but I know more of the stories that are going on in WD, the WWE. So mm -hmm. I just, yeah, I just. But that's that's what I stick with. I stick with that one. I'm I'm just used to it. At uh, this moment, right now, who's your who's your favorite wrestler right now in WWE? Um, right now I'm kind of on a flat plank okay. because I was really hoping they weren't going to break up the bloodline. Mm -hmm. I thought have them some problems, you know, like they can't be perfect, have them some problems, you know, do this and that might happen, you know, and then, but I started seeing it happen. Like, you know, you just look and you're like, see the tension. They're doing it with Judgment Day right now, with mm -hmm. this thing about how the 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 briefcase is cursed, because every time Finn Balor is supposed to get it, he loses because somebody else gets. It. Like it's going to turn into something. Then they're going to they break up these factions that are so good sometimes. 
I think sometimes too early. Mm-hmm. Because I like that. And then I, okay, so then I liked how they positioned Roman Reigns. He had all the belts. He had like the SmackDown, he had the Raw, and then he had the new gold one, the one yeah, that they presented to him. Instead of cashing the other three, he's like, no, I'm taking all three belts. He's walking out all three. Yeah, Paul Heyman had both of them, and he wore the one or put it over. Like, that was cool because, you know, he's a big dude. You would think he just needs a bigger opponent. Like, but I don't yeah. want him to put him against like Brock Lesnar again. Maybe. He fights the, what does he call him? The Nigerian Nightmare or whatever his name is. Uh, Omas? Omas. But I don't think Omas, like I'm not saying uh, Roman Reigns is not a good, a great wrestler, but I think Omas is not as good of not, a wrestler. He's not at the level of uh, like at that yet. So Yeah, he just, he's the great Kali, just a big chop, big yeah. punch, pick you up, throw you down, step on you throw you into a bunch of things you know what i mean like one of those type of stuff so exactly. i don't think it would be an interesting match so it would have to be someone that you know that could push roman to wrestle even better can't be a john cena no could be the rock could be that well that's what i was thinking they were going to do maybe like there's rumors that he's keeping the title i think till wrestlemania 40 and the rock's supposed to have one last match on that contract that he made a couple of years back so that could be the last match the Rock, you know, for like who's who's the real tribal chief? Like they're gonna keep building it up to that and having that at WrestleMania 40 because it's like you know like the 40th anniversary. That's that's a very good angle because so Jay, which one's out? Jay is out or says he's out? Yeah, Jimmy is still around, and then you have um, uh, what's the other one with the thumb in the throat? Uh, Soka, Soka, and then you have Roman Reigns. Yeah, so. Imagine if you look at it like, okay, well, then you're going to have these guys all doing whatever, whatever over here. So then, like you said, the real tribal chief is going to come in and the rock's going to come and try and connect all this other stuff. And they're going to say blah, 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 and whatever's going to come in. Then who's the Ro- Rocky Johnson? Is he still alive? No, that's their, uh, yeah, the rock's dad. No, he's not alive anymore. What about, um, Rikishi's still alive. Yeah, Rikishi's still alive. And Yoko, so one of the older elders mm-hmm. are going to come. This is, uh, I don't know, maybe I should try out for a WWE writer or something. Like that. <laughs> one of the older, one of the elders, they're going to come in and be like, this has to be settled in tribal ways or something like that. And that's where they set up the rock against Roman Reigns to go and bring peace and harmony back into the family. Because I, I was watching something on YouTube. They got like, there's like 15 of that bloodline in wrestling, period. Oh, yeah. They're, they're, they're everywhere. They're everywhere. And they'll all come down to the ring, and it'll be the Roman Reigns against The Rock, WrestleMania 40. Yeah, and I, all the big guys are there. Everybody's there. Like, they set it up like that. I don't know. I think that'll be big. It would and, be that set up, and that squashes it. That squashes the thing. They hug or they just never talk again until 10 years later, like Owen Hart and Bret Hart did back in the day. Rest in peace, Owen Hart. Exactly. Yeah, that'd be, that'd be, that'd be, that'd be, that'd be like the crucial end of the Rock 2 crew. Like, so that, could, that could announce his retirement, having that one last big match in the family type thing. So. And then he could, he could drop the bell. Cause that for, and here's the question you can answer me um, if you know it. Um, why they move? pay-per-views from sunday to saturday but then they could go and rock a drop the belt on the monday and be like you know this was my final match and then retire as champion and just come focus on his acting career and come back every once in a while like it, it leaves the doors open but he's not obligated to wrestle anymore it just shows face well that's what that's, that's, what, my, the rock, that's what the rock yeah. does now i think that's what cena's trying to do right now too because he's really wants yeah. more acting so and there's a couple other wrestlers that want to get into that too now. For like Seth Rollins wants to get into acting because he's he's in the new uh, Captain America movie. Uh, Roman Reigns wants to do more acting too. So you got all these people that want to get into more acting and less wrestling, right? But less toll yeah, on their body as well. Yeah, and they're acting when they're doing their when they're doing their promos. They have to get in character, or when they're wrestling, even it's just that they don't really get chopped with a Ric Flair chop in the movie. Well, maybe sometimes they do, but. Yeah. They don't have to take the bump. They don't have to take the bump, but they got to act still. To yeah. yeah, so, yeah, man. So that's what I'm thinking. I still watch wrestling. I don't 
have necessarily the time, not even not the interest, but I just have other things to do where I don't watch it as often as I used to. I used to watch it, sit down, and watch it every Monday night, every Thursday. Then they moved to Friday and moved to Tuesday then moved to Thursday. And now it's on Friday again. Um, I just watched the highlights and then I had to watch it live because I wasn't as internet -y as I was back then. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Now, uh, last time I'm going to ask you about is movies. Have you seen any new movies lately? Have you, you watched yes. a lot of movies? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I, I, I'm usually, if I'm at home, I'm usually a one movie a night type thing. So, like, I'll just, oh. and sometimes they're so good that I see, okay, so I'm a guy that talks to the TV. So that okay. either leads to things. It's like we were, how we were just talking about wrestling. It's like wrestlers. It's like you either want them to boo you or cheer you. But if they don't make no noise, they don't care about you. Mm -hmm. So, you know, like they want to boo you so bad, like how they boo uh, Dominic, Dominic Mysterio. <laughs> like they yeah. don't even let them talk. They don't even let them talk. Like they boo him out. But that's an acknowledgement. And then when whoever comes down to the ring that they love, like Edge or whoever, they cheer. You just walk down the ring and everybody's like eating their popcorn, the music, because there's not enough noise from the crowd going around. The music's just echoing around off the whole building, like, you know, like nobody's even caring. They're like, who's this? Yeah. So, yeah, so like when I watch movies, I'm like that. If I don't really care or if I drift and actually me drifting off into a sleep is not a non-common thing because I'll just I always have to watch a movie three times because I'll either mm -hmm. I'll watch the beginning for some reason because it's always usually later in the evening or something like that then i'll drift off at the end and maybe wake up when the credits go on or i watch the beginning to the middle and fall asleep at the end and then just go to put it back on and it says rewatch and i'm like i didn't even finish watching this um <laughs> so yeah so i do that usually a lot of nights and um yeah i just watched um the new matrix the third one oh. resurrection or something like that i thought mm -hmm. it was cool but it was like what I found about the movie was that it was it seemed more like a love story rescue mission instead of like how the other ones were where they were saving the world. Like I know they still had a save the world element in there, but they're all, it's all about Trinity. Go get it. I just watched it, so that's why it's so fresh in my in my head right mm -hmm. now. Uh I just watched it. Um Yeah, it's funny. We watched yeah, we watched it about like four days ago too. So we, we Yeah. I'm like, let's watch the Matrix. Okay, I'll watch that. So yeah, um, I, yeah, I watch I watch a lot of rando movies. I'm watching this Joe Pickett uh, series on Prime right now. It's one of these like westerns. I'm kind of into western movies, war mm -hmm. movies, uh, history movies like a Troy or Gladiator or something like that. I, and I and I randomly I just randomly go out and look for them. Like I'll just go and I'll type in top whatever movie western movies of whatever 2023 and then i'll go and then i'll just go on youtube and then i'll just be like and search up the trailers and see where yeah. it's playing yeah and then i'll just sit and watch it and then this is where it gets to the uh baby face in the heel if the movie's real good then i start arguing with the people that do dumb stuff like when jason's chasing everybody and they run upstairs and they're like, well, where are you gonna go from upstairs? So I'm like yelling at the TV. <laughs> like, yeah, I, I do. I'm like, like they hide in the closet. It's like, why are you hiding in the fucking closet? You know, you can't yeah. there. Like, yeah, I just start and I start. They get huh? scared and they run outside. Don't run outside. If it's, if, if, if the killer, if the killer calls, they're like, like scream when they say, "I'm outside watching you." Don't run outside. Stay inside. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like figure out something. Or when they run and they always fall and yeah, you know. But like that again. But or, or the, the the cliche when they always say I'll be right back, you're never coming back. Yeah, you're never coming back, especially <laughs> if you especially especially if you're on like a lake and you have like one of those docks with the boat hanging yeah. on the side. Oh, you're yeah. never coming back. Well, I go camping and someone says I'll be right back. I'm like, see you later. Nice knowing you. So. <laughs> but uh, yeah, but yeah, well, but then on uh, but on the heel side, then uh, if it's such a sucky movie and I already gone halfway through, mm -hmm. then that's where I'll be like. Now I'm just like complaining at the movie. Oh, 
come on, you didn't know, like, you know, doing all of this. But then I'm always in, I already invested like half, like half the movie time into it. So I'm just like, I just got to wait it out now, like, just so I could see how bad this movie is. And if somebody asks me, did you ever see so-and-so? And I could be like, yeah, I did. And I could actually talk about it. But yeah, so if I fall asleep and don't care to put it back on, then eh, you're the yeah. blue meanie. Last movie I tried to watch, and I, I haven't even seen the whole thing, if someone re- referred it to me, it's called Zombie Beavers. It's beavers that get radioactive and poison put in them, they die, they turn into zombies, and they attack these people at a cabin, and when you get bitten by one, you become a half zombie, half beaver, half human. It's, I, I don't know. Okay, well, hold on. I'm getting a paper to write this down. Where do I find this movie, and what is this thing? Hold on. Wait, I got to get a pen. Okay, it is called Zombiever. This is so, I never heard it. I heard a cocaine bear. I watched that one the other day. Yeah. There's also a Zom- uh, crack, crack, crack raccoon, raccoon or something coming out too. That's on YouTube as well. So. Oh my gosh, you're making this up. Nope, I'll send you the links on <laughs> Zombiever and Crack Raccoon? Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Crack and everybody was watching. Check that out too. Go check out these movies too, and you'll laugh your ass off too. So. <laughs> okay, well, I, I wrote those on. Awesome. Well, like always, brothers, thanks for being on the show. It's always fun talking with you. So, if uh, if people want to follow you, you want to give them all your social media platforms. Yes, and thank you everybody out there for um, uh, supporting. And thank you very much for having me on the show. And uh, yeah, you could follow me at Shockler Official at Instagram. You could follow me at Shockler Official on YouTube. You could follow me at Shockler on Twitter, Shockler on Facebook, Shockler Chisnock on Facebook, and Shockler Official on Threads. And uh, I don't know. I don't know if anybody's checking me on LinkedIn, but I have one there too. So just look up Shockler as well. I'm everywhere. So, uh, and I will be coming into your cities real soon. Everybody on the East Coast. There's things being lined up. I think there's a poster out there already. And um, yeah, we're going to have a good time and uh, get back on the stage and get back to shows and showing love to people that have been supporting me for over 20 years. I can't believe it. Perfect. Well, thank you very much again for being on the show, brother. And take care. All right. Talk to you soon, bro.